Uh, you've said just now about augmenting intelligence rather than just pure artificial intelligence. And you've talked about ways just now that machines can work with people. Do you think that the quest of a company like Microsoft should be creating uh, technology that replaces humans or play, uh, creating technology that partners with humans? I, for sure, am focused on technology that partners with humans. It doesn't mean that some of this technology does not replace some of the human activity that we do today. Uh, that's sort of the, distinguish, uh, the, the, the distinction. But I do want technology that is fundamentally going to bring out the best in us, give us that productivity gain, give us the avenues to be more creative, give us to have the impact that we all seek to have in the world. Uh, that's definitely what I want us. Like, for example, one of the things that uh, we're very enthused about is Cort Cortana, which is something that Yuri talked about, which is agents are definitely like the web. I think it's the third runtime. If you sort of said PC operating system was sort of the beginning of personal computing, then we had the web. What is the new runtime to me is this runtime around agents, personal assistants. And the idea of the personal assistant for me is it's not about replacing my administrative assistant, actually. It is, in fact, giving me my time back where in all this abundance I have of compute power, what I don't have is the attention span, uh, perhaps, to be able to really love, live a full life, to be able to enjoy every moment. But if I could have an assistant that in fact knows me, knows my context, knows the world and can help me, that is helping me. You said a moment ago though that you'd be creating technology that replaces some of what humans do, takes over of what some of humans do. The argument that's gone on for 200 years, ever since the Luddites were smashing the looms, is that technology will create fewer jobs. If technology makes us productive, will there be more jobs or fewer jobs in the future? Look, there is no question that with every new technology, there is massive displacement that we have had to deal with. Uh, it is true in the Industrial Revolution. It's going to be true in this dig digital age or AI age. And an argument can be made that in the past there was enough time for the person being displaced to in fact retire so that their children could get skilled in something else and find a job. Right After all, we've seen some of the biggest uh, displacement or migration from the agrarian economy uh, to the service economy of the modern uh, United States. And that has been a generational shift as opposed to happening within, within a generation. And so therefore, I think we might have to deal with this uh, much more than we have dealt with in the past. So then my answer to that, or at least my one solution to that, is that means we got we, this entire notion that somehow I'll go to school, I'll get educated in a skill, and I'll get a job, and that's it and I'll be in that job, I think those days are over. Uh, we will have to deal with as a society, as an economy, reskilling on a constant basis. We see that even in high tech. Uh, when we look at, for example, one of the biggest things that I'm gonna probably push is how do I teach software engineers some of these new techniques to be relevant uh, going forward? And what will Microsoft do to help reskill our society? Will you create products and services and LinkedIn, you know, tie that in for that? For sure. That is, in fact, one of the things that I think a lot about. Um, and Yuri touched on this, which I was thinking about, which is we sort of said there's, what, a $1 trillion of surplus or created every five years now, and the consumer Internet has been an amazing thing in the last 10 years. But you look at the productivity stats and the job growth stats, uh, they're pretty stagnant. Um, and so the question I've been asking myself is, you know, whether it's maybe the way we measure productivity or what have you, but nevertheless, how can digital technology 
in fact, lead to more jobs. The question is, is there going to be a dividend of digital technology that is much more evenly spread uh, between professions, between countries? And in that context, I start, in fact, with how do we enable people to be more creative? What tools can we build uh, to be able to learn, but actually apply that learning to create? Uh, that is at the fundamental pursuit of LinkedIn, because LinkedIn is not just about having your profile and finding a job, but it is about being able to find your economic opportunity uh, and then knowing what skills you need to acquire in order to find that economic opportunity. And that's definitely the pursuit.